What's up guys, welcome to Fit and Tech, I'm Carlos. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five odd things that you should have as a beginner videographer. The fifth thing is down below and we'll get to that at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about these four. And I'm glad you're here because I'm excited to get into it. So, let's get into it. We're gonna work our way from the right to the left. Now, have you ever thought about saving your footage? You wanna save your footage and you do that with SSDs and drives and you have backups of your backups. And a lot of people have so much information that they have whole stacks of backups. Well, in exactly the same way, you're gonna to wanna to back up the information you learn on set or from your internships or wherever you work. This is important to do because if you don't have it, you may need it in the future and now you can't look back on it or find it and you'll have to rely on your memory. And we're human and we forget things. So if you want to avoid that, then I recommend you get yourself a little diary or a little notebook. These notebooks are phenomenal. Some of these notebooks have lines on them so you can write stuff and some of them don't. Others have grids and boxes and dots. So it just really depends on the kind you want. These ones over here I have used up. One is for writing my thoughts and ideas and another one is for writing things that I've learned, like direct information as opposed to what I felt about it, what I thought about it, what it meant to me. And you can see here that you know, there's interview questions, uh, information that clients have required to be in their process, uh, you know, setting up a cinematography workshop, all the things that I needed to do for that, shot lists, lighting, all that kind of stuff, it's in here. And I have it every time I need to take a look at it. These are not very expensive and usually you can get a two pack or a three pack or a whole set. The reason why I chose this one in particular is as you can see with this one, there's nowhere to put my pen and so my pen can get lost in the universe as opposed to getting lost on my page, which is where I want the information to go. So I have one here able to contain a pen. Now also with this one, it has tabs that I could organize more if I needed to, or for others, if they needed to take a look at this information as well. I'm probably not gonna use that. I may use that for another book, that's totally fine. But I would recommend you get something like this where you can write your notes or draw pictures. All right, so the second one we're gonna talk about is this right here. And everybody should have a multi-tool. Now the multi-tools come in a variety of setups, which are, you know, some are flatheads, some are specifically designed for camera work. Um, some are just general use. Now this one here is a bike tool I got for like $11 seven years ago. I'm pretty thrilled with this. It's flat, so I can store it in a lot of places where it's not gonna cause any issue. Uh, it has a Torx, it has a, a Phillips head, a flat head, and it's metric hex keys. These hex keys are everywhere and somehow I managed to get one that works with all the new and current gear that I would get for the future. So this is something that's super important to have at your fingertips. Oftentimes in general, your new camera gear will come with an Allen key here or another one there, and they'll be different sizes. And while that's nice that they include those, the problem is you got nowhere to place them. Unless you have a bag full of just random size tools, you don't want that. So I recommend that you look into an item like this where it'll have everything kind of all together. Small Rig has them, Newer has them, a bunch of companies have them. Condor Blue has a new version out that's actually quite cool. So take a look at that. I prefer this one because it's simple and it's cheap. Those ones are more than $20 and you might not want to pay that much, especially if you have to spend that money on other items. Okay, the third item we're gonna look at is a headlamp. 
Now the headlamp is great. Why don't you just use a flashlight? Isn't that fine? Can't you just pick up a flashlight? And that would be okay if you want to do that. Now the good thing about having something like this is that this can go around your neck, around your head. The cool thing about this is that it makes your situation hands free. So now you can pick up things, you can turn it on and see what you're looking for. You can let it hang and still operate and still see what you have in your hands. You can fix things. You can, if you put it up here, of course, you can now hands-free fix whatever you want on your camera rig or if you're you know, in a studio, if you're in a dark room and see much better with this. A flashlight, you're gonna be holding it and you only have one hand that's free. So that's why I recommend something like this headlamp. And this I got specifically without the red feature so that I don't have to worry about dealing with that when I'm fixing up a camera or look, searching in my bag. I don't have to switch through all those modes. I just have three modes, on, lower, and off. So that's why this is very valuable. Moving on to number four. Now, this one here is a color checker. I know you guys can see that there. And the color checker is awesome. This has been a very useful tool in order to help me white balance my camera. You really don't want to mess with kind of figuring out what the white balance is. You can use a sheet of paper, you can use a gray sheet of paper, but this is specifically designed for you to use for your camera. If you've ever been worried about the right color balance, this will certainly ease that. It is a little bit on the spendier side at around $129, I believe, but it is well worth it. It has a ruler on the bottom here. It has the correct colors that you might need for your footage. It's got gray, white, black. Then it over here on the other side, it has your white that you can use as well if you want to just color check with the white and over here is something specific for video if I get closer you can see it's kind of trippy but that contrast with those zebra stripes are actually great for helping focus peaking it'll show you how in focus your image actually is so it's a very good feature and not all of them have this so when you're talking about video specifically, you're gonna want something like this. And I think they do a really good job, not to mention how thin this is. This is the right size to fit in your back pocket, in a small pocket in your bag, or what have you, you can take this anywhere. I can fit it right in here if I wanted to, and it's now on the go. So that's great, totally worth investing in especially as a beginner when you don't really know how to color balance appropriately. Okay, so as we're approaching the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about the fifth thing that I think is super important that you guys have, a camera bag, and specifically a camera bag at that. There are other bags that you can get that are, well, let's say more for backpacking or something like this, where they don't have a camera cube. And the reason why the camera cube is super important, it looks like this, is because you can put all your gear in here and shape it the way you want, and it's protected. These are protection. So that keeps from things banging inside your bag. They get cracked or damaged or scuffed and. You know, you don't, you don't really want to deal with that at all. So invest in a good bag. Now, this bag in particular, I will do a separate video on so you can see all the great features that this bag has to offer. I love this bag. I've had it for about four years now, and it is still in excellent condition. I've taken this bag to Spain. I've taken it to Oregon. I've taken it to New Mexico and to Arizona. And so this bag has been to a lot of places. It's held up very well. Sometimes it gets scuffed up, but that's okay. That's what's meant to happen. It's supposed to protect my gear. The reason why I'm saying you should get something like this instead of one of those simple backpacking bags is also because this is weatherproof. 
this can hold more than just my camera stuff. It is the 31 liter Provoke bag from Wandered. And Wandered has done a great job in compartmentalizing the different segments. I can put my camera in here. I can put a bunch of stuff in here. And it has a spot right here where I have access to my camera in case I need to use it fast. If I'm outside and, you know, in the forest or something and want to take a picture or a video of a deer and I want to do it quickly, I have access to it right here along with cube which matches up in that same spot. You can see the outline right here. Well, that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Just so you guys know, I will put alternatives and these items in the description so that you can purchase them if you so choose. If you have any other gear that you want to add to this list, please let me know also in the comment section and we can have a chat about it. I'm excited to see and hear what you guys have to offer in terms of that. Once again, I do appreciate you guys watching. Hope it was enjoyable. And I will see you in the next video.